If you're like me, you like building agents, and you have to put lots of instructions together to get the agents to perform all of the tasks they need to do, I can get pretty complex. Yeah, except, Mike, there's a recent wave of models that are just way better at managing their own orchestration, at reasoning through a goal you put in front of them, leveraging tools to enable them to do things that the base model can't do alone. I, you, you really don't have to do all of that work anymore. So you're telling me that I don't need to write lots of complex instructions. You're telling, telling me that the model can just figure it out itself. Yeah, they're getting very good and better all the time. Fair enough. And that's really why my team at Q Developers started building Strands agents. We were building agents since a couple of years ago with their very early models, and you had to give them lots of instructions. You had to tell them how to put together JSON and try to parse what they came out with. Um, but as agents got better, we realized we didn't have to do all of that work. And it was always very flaky and re required a lot of tuning. And it took us months to get to production with an agent that had a very complicated workflow and instructions. And we started building Strands agents for our own purposes internally, trying to get agents into production, build new agents, um, and take advantage of the, the reasoning capabilities, the tool use capabilities that models have today. And we call that model-driven agents. And we started building it for Q developer agents. And uh, we're pretty excited to open source it today. So whilst it's brand new today, as far as we're concerned, you've actually been using this for months behind the scenes, and it's battle-hardened? That's right. We used to find that it would take maybe a couple of days for us to write a new agent with any of the agent frameworks out there, but it would take us months to get it into production because there's so much tuning and tweaking and things. And since we've written Strands Agents and started using it in production, our teams have been writing brand new agents and getting them to production in a couple of weeks. So it's been amazing to see how much faster the team is able to go when we're able to rely on the model and take advantage of the model's capabilities that they have today. I like the sound of this. OK, so Ryan, can you show me a demo? I'm assuming it's going to be pretty straightforward because you're just going to stand back and let the model take the strain. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. And I'll give you a real simple example just to get us started. All I do, and this is a Python project, I'm just importing the Strands Agents SDK. I'm giving it some basic tools. It comes out of the box with dozens of tools for various things. I'm importing tools that let it interact with APIs and generate its own Python to solve complex problems. There's also tools for interacting with AWS APIs, even you know retrieving and, and analyzing images and all kinds of useful utilities. And you can plug in any MCP server that you have um, that you've built yourself in any language or the thousands that are available on the web. And then once you have those tools selected, you're really just defining an agent to use those tools. You can also define which model you want to use. I'm going to go with the default here for simplicity. It's a bedrock model using Claude Sonnet. You can use Olama locally. You can use a bunch of different model providers, including from other first parties. Uh, and then you give your model uh, a goal. In this case, I just wanted to find out where the International Space Station is relative to me, and that's all I'm giving it. I'm not telling it, use this tool, then that tool. I'm not telling it how to solve the problem. I'm just giving it the goal, equipping it with tools, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, this is, of course, just me running it interactively locally. You can de you know, develop, debug, and deploy this like any other Python application. And based on that one simple instruction and two tools, it's first um, figuring out what I want, coming up with its own plan, reasoning about the steps, and of course, using its tools to solve this problem. In this case, it's going to ask me for confirmation. You get a lot of controls over how you equip agents with tools by first explicitly telling them they have tools. And then, of course, per tool, I can give it um, whether a human needs to be in the loop. In this case, because I'm running interactively, that's convenient for me. Or you can, of course, approve it for certain operations in, in a production context. And then very quickly, you can see how it just calculates the distance between where I am in Portland, Oregon, to where the ISS is right now. And you can just scale up from here and keep going. So we get to wave to the International Space Station as it's flying by. Um, I love this. OK, so easy to get started. Um, but of course, we can use Strands agents to build something much more comprehensive. Maybe, Suman, you can give us an example of what that looks like. Absolutely. What we're going to do now is we'll uh, take an example of a multimodal RAG pipeline. And we will see that how we can make an uh, agentic workflow using Strand. So 
just as a background, what we are trying to do, we are trying to make an AI powered tutor where we can, we will use a lot of data, which could be your books, knowledge bases, and et cetera. And we are going to use a vision based language model to create the embeddings. And we will store that embeddings in a vector store like quadrant in this case. And then what we're going to do is we are going to send the query which is the questions about our knowledge base using some of the LLMs. It could be Bedrock, it could be Olama, or it could be any model of your choice. Now, this is a very simple RAG-based architecture where we ask a question, it will do the retrieval, and we will get the response. But we wanted to make this production ready by making an agentic RAG solution. And that's where we are going to make use of Strang's agent. And what we will do is we are going to convert this retrieval process into a custom tool. And we will see that how you can make your function as a tool which you can use with Strang uh, agents It's in just one line of code. So let's get started. So first, we are going to create a custom tool. And it's just one line of code. We will import tools from Strands. And we will have our function, which will take the query and generate uh, the response. And we can make this as a tool with just a, a simple decorator by calling add tool. And then we can define what model we want to use with this agent. So the way that we can import uh, different models is like this. We can just simply call strands from strands SDK models, and we can import bedrock models or uh, Olama models, and you can make use of different models of your choice. And we are also importing uh, the default tool from strands tools. And once that is done, we can simply go ahead and create our custom tool, uh, mentioning the tool definitions that we have, and simply go ahead and create agents. We simply call agent, we pass the model of our choice, in this case, Olama. We can pass the system prompt and the tools that we are going to use with this. We have two tools. One is the custom tool that is retrieved from Quadrant, and the other one is the image uh, reader tool. And finally, we can just run our, question, our query. So here we are asking a question, explain the dispersion of white light by the glass prism looks like. So this is the data set that we have is a our uh, 10th grade physics uh, curriculum. So it should be able to give the answer by extracting the information uh, from our knowledge base. So let's give it a moment. All right, as you can see, uh, it is using the custom tool that we have created uh, in the first place so that it can retrieve the information. And then it is using the default tool so that it can make use of that extracted information and pass it on uh, to the LLM and we get the final response uh, from the LLM. Okay, fantastic. Um, now, Claire, both Ryan before and Suman just now have both been using their own laptops to run this code. How do we get this code then into production? So on the strands documentation and on GitHub, we've provided a deployment toolkit. We show you how to containerize a strands application, put it on Fargate, or you can put it in Lambda functions or in EC2 instances, or really you can run it anywhere, anywhere that you would run a Python application. And we use it in a lot of different configurations in, inside of AWS and in and my team, Q Developer, uh, we have uh, CLI applications that are based on it, kind of similar to what Ryan showed you, more interactive. But then we also have backends and agents behind APIs and um, agents that are driving tools within things like the Q Developer CLI on your laptop. And so we use it in a lot of different contexts. So it's very flexible from that perspective of how to use it in production and, and how to uh, run the tools and how to access the models. Awesome. And look, Ryan, you showed us the code um, and we'll have instructions below with how to get started and what those links are. Um, but this is an open source project, right? So we're looking for contributions. 
Yeah, I, we have a number of contributions already. We would love yours as well. It's a it's an open Apache 2 licensed project, uh, and you can customize by adding your own model providers. You can add tools. You can add sample agents to show off what you've managed to build or hack on new abstractions to make the framework more powerful. I'm really excited to get my hands on this. So thank you so much for being with us here today. All the links will be down in the description below, like we've said. Um, if you did like this video, then please do give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe to this channel and expect to see more about Strands Agents coming very soon. Thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.